Hey guys, let's get more news about Lakers, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. 5 Lakers Legends Who Should Be In The Next Athlete Roast Hot off the heels of the polarizing Netflix special The Roast of Tom Brady, it only seems a matter of time before more athletes are featured. The Los Angeles Lakers have no shortage of interesting personalities to feature and the list of potential roast masters is intriguing. A roast is a comedic event meant to honor someone by essentially making fun of them, oftentimes in a way that looks at controversial events from their past. The roastee is always in on the joke and ultimately it's meant to be entertaining and not intentionally hurtful. There is a roast master, host, and a group of people who do the roasting of the featured guest as well as each other, Deus. Recently, roasts have been done mostly by actors and comedians, but athletes are not new to this space. Shaquille O'Neal, Emmett Smith, and Terry Bradshaw are notable athletes who have had the honor of being insulted in front of their friends and family in the name of comedy. For the sake of this exercise, we'll only choose living members to participate. The roastee must have played for the Lakers, but the roast master and Deus members need to have been connected in some way. We'll have one roastee, one roast master, and one featured Deus member. Roastee, Magic Johnson. Roast master, Larry Bird. Deus, Bill Lamebeer. The Lakers, Boston Celtics, and Detroit Pistons crossed paths throughout the 1980s, sparking heated rivalries that caused a lot of intense confrontations. With Bird being historically noted as one of the best trash talkers in NBA history, he's the perfect choice as roast master. Lame Beer was always an instigator and seeing him verbally jab at Magic and Bird is like throwing gasoline on a fire. Roasty, Pat Riley, Roast Master, Phil Jackson, Deus, Danny Ainge, they might not have had as fiery of a rivalry as others on this list, but Riley and Jackson are forever linked and compared due to their success with the franchise. I'm sure they could roast each other based on style choices alone. Ainge fits as a longtime Riley nemesis who competed against Riley in a number of different ways, from on the court to in the executive suites. Their beef is documented, all the way down to spite signings. Roastee, LeBron James, Roast Master, Michael Jordan, Deus, Kevin Garnett, Goat vs. Goat. The LeBron vs. MJ debates have been raging for over a decade at this point, why not hear some of the arguments from the men themselves? Throw in a salty KG, who was blessed enough to compete against both and the scene is set for what would be must-see TV. Garnett would likely side with Jordan, and I'd pay to see the look on Jordan's face when Garnett mentions how he broke LeBron. LeBron James on Michael Porter Jr. against Lakers, I feel like versus us, that mother asterisk 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 don't miss. LeBron James was impressed by Nuggets forward Michael Porter Jr.'s offensive efficiency after their 2024 first-round series. LeBron openly called Porter a laser and wondered why Porter seems to not miss shots when matching up against the Lakers. Michael Porter Jr. is a f asterisk 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 ing laser. I don't know if it's because he sees the Lakers or gold, or whatever, I feel like versus us, that mother f asterisk 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 er don't miss. There was a game where he literally did not miss. I was like, you can't even close the gap. Porter Jr. had a great first-round performance against the Lakers, averaging 22.8 points on 55.3% from the field and 48.8% from three as the Nuggets' third option. Even if the Lakers could figure out how to limit Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic, Porter Jr. is the kind of offensive talent to drag them back into the game with his surgical scoring ability. Porter averaged 16.7 points on 48.4% from the field and 39.7% from three in the regular season. He struggled in the two playoff games against the Timberwolves, averaging 14.5 points on 40% from the field and 35.7% from three. LeBron did outperform Porter Jr. by averaging 27.8 points, 6.8 rebounds, and 8.8 .8 assists on 56.6% .6 shooting from the field and 28.5% from three. 
despite the performance, he'd rather have smaller numbers and the series win. James is also still the number one option in LA despite completing his 21st season as compared to MPJ being a third option in his prime. The Nuggets won this matchup against the Lakers through a comprehensive 4-1 series triumph. LeBron gave his candid thoughts on the same on the Mind the Game podcast with J.J. Redick. Going against the defending champions in the first round is always going to be a difficult challenge. We knew that coming into it. But, F asterisk asterisk K, we had so many opportunities, man, you know, and to lose in five, two of them being game winners by, you know, Jamal, you know, his greatness. But we had so many opportunities. James didn't make any excuses for the loss and said that the Nuggets deserve all the credit they're getting. But F asterisk asterisk K, man, I feel like, you know, a couple plays here, a couple plays there. You know, we could have won the series, but the better team won. The better team won, for sure. Give credit where credit is due. Unfortunately, the Lakers showed vulnerabilities in the Nuggets' offense, enjoying big leads in all five games before their offense slowly brought them back. The Nuggets are currently facing the Minnesota Timberwolves, who have the defensive personnel to stop the Nuggets. They already showed they could do that in Game 2 by restricting the Nuggets to 80 points for the lowest point score of this playoffs. The Lakers had great defensive moments, but they couldn't expect to consistently match up with Denver over 48 minutes while having an inferior roster and a coach who struggled to counter opposing coaches with in-game adjustments. The next Lakers head coach will have their task cut out for them, but hopefully, LeBron supports them and allows them to take control of the locker room to build a winner. Ex-Milwaukee Bucks coach among Los Angeles Lakers coaching candidates after two years coaching LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers, Darvin Ham was recently let go by the team due to his failure to prevent the Denver Nuggets from eliminating them in the playoffs. Among the names being considered as his replacement is former Milwaukee Bucks head coach Mike Budenholzer. Ham spent 11 years as an assistant coach for the Lakers, Atlanta Hawks, and Bucks since the 2011-12 season. He was then named to a head coaching gig, the first of his career, back in 2022 to replace Frank Vogel. From there, Hem spent his first season as coach trying to make the trio of James, Anthony Davis, and Russell Westbrook work. After trading the latter, the Lakers surged in the playoffs and made the conference finals in 2023. Unfortunately, they fell to the Denver Nuggets and found themselves eliminated from contention. This season, though, saw him struggling to keep the Lakers afloat in a competitive Western Conference. After mustering enough wins to make the play-in tournament and obtaining a playoff spot, Los Angeles found itself facing the Nikola Jokic-led Nuggets again in the first round. Once they were eliminated, Hem was let go for losing his team's trust and failing to make the most out of the roster. With him gone, the Lakers are now looking at several names to replace him, such as Ty Lu, J.J. Redick, and former Bucks coach Mike Budenholzer. Budenholzer spent five seasons coaching Milwaukee and five for the Hawks before that. For the former, though, he has a record of 391 victories and 271 victories. Budenholzer also coached the Giannis Antetokounmpo-led team to a championship in 2021. It remains to be seen whether Los Angeles will pick Budenholzer or other names on the list. What's certain, though, is that he may have what it takes to steady the ship for the Lakers next season and help that team to get back to where they were a couple of years ago. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Mike Budenholzer? Leave your opinion in the comments.